Good morning. We greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank all of you this morning for taking the time out of your day, uh, exercising um, some, some bit of faith, um, coming out to fellowship with, with us on this morning. And for all of you who are listening um, and watching um, by video, we thank you as well for taking the time out of your busy schedule of your day to, to tune in as well. So let us um, open up with our call to worship. Oh, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's go before him with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let us sing unto the Lord a new song. He's done great praise. Amen, amen. All of you that know me, I always like to say, let us give God a hand clap of praise for the great things that God has done. And I will testify to you today that the Lord has been good to me this week. Amen. Amen. All of us, we know that uh, tax, uh, personal property taxes are due. And um, I'll tell you, um, um, I had to, you know, pay my personal property taxes. Um, I had to pay the personal property taxes on my buildings. And the, um, the heat went out and I had to call the, the air conditioner guy. And I tell you, um, the problem was very minor. And I just thank God that it was nothing more than what it was. Amen. So God really does miracles in the lives of his people. Amen. Now, it's up to us individually to 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 determine uh, what is a miracle and what is not. But I challenge you, though, if you if you would would um, not put so much into yourself. Amen. But have a selfless spirit. I guarantee just a bandage on a wound is a miracle. Amen. Because God has blessed us greatly and abundantly. So let us um, have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for leading, guiding and keeping us. We thank you for protecting us. God, we thank you for watching over us and keeping us. And God, with great assurance, God, we know, God, that all is well. And God, we believe that, that, that you are moving in, in this world today. Whatever's going on is your business, God. And God, the only business that we have, God, is to trust you and to have faith in you and continue to love one another and continue to serve one another. So, God, we pray that you bless the services they bless everyone, your entire creation. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we have um, the names for the uh, pastoral search committee, and I'm going to call those names. Um, Mr. Harvey Cobb, Miss Natasha Palmer, Mr. Ron Baton, Miss Linda Keen, Miss Kim Freeman, Miss Shirley Baycoat, Miss Shirley Fraser. Ms. Cheryl Ferrier and Mr. Rob Cobb. So those are the members who are going to lead this pastoral research committee. Um, as far as um, what we're going to do for Christmas, um, I really don't know right now um, because we really don't have a lot of time and it takes a little bit of planning. Um, but I want all of you to know that uh, the Family Life Center is, 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 is alive and well. Amen. And uh, we're going to get things um, back to rolling and preferably we're going to uh, institute some new things. Amen. This is a new season coming up. Right. So preferably we're going to inst institute some some different things. So now let us um, have our offering. So we have different ways of giving. Um, you can give online worldvictory.net. Uh, you can give through the app called Giftlify. You can mail in your offerings and you can also bring your offerings to the church. And for anyone who is out of state, um, perhaps um, tuning in to our services, uh, we have our address um, posted um, on the broadcast so that you can uh, jot down the address. And we definitely um, welcome um, all of we welcome your givings, your givings. And we thank you um, for uh, considering um, sharing um, with the, our church. So now this is something that we haven't done in a while. Well, we want to um, welcome any visitors. Do we have any visitors uh, with us today? Amen. Everybody's, um, we're we, we filling the church. We're getting back where, where we need to be. Um, birthdays. Anybody had any birthdays 
um, from uh, last Wednesday to this Wednesday. Any anniversaries? And we like to um, mention our, our, our sick and our, our shut in. Um, you know, um, we have a great committee that takes care of, of, of anyone who's sick or shut in. And uh, we thank God for you all. We thank God that you are still um, sending out cars and, and, and uh, praying for them um, and whatever else uh, you may be doing at this time uh, during the COVID. Now, let us bless this offering, OK? <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you for the gifts that we've received. We thank you, Lord, for uh, just touching the hearts of the hearts and the minds of people to give, to support this ministry. And most of all, God, we pray that we will continue to to seek you, God, and how we administer these gifts, what we do with them and how we um, uh, serve your kingdom. And God, we thank you. We give you all the praise, glory and honor. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to have a, 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 a song by Sister Sheila. Good morning. Good morning. Well, the sound man says my disc won't work, but the devil is a liar. Right. I'm going right. to sing these songs a right. Hark the herald
thank you so much for that selection. I really love the Christmas season. Yesterday in the barbershop, I watched a new Unfrosty the Snowman movie. And in this movie, he actually had a wife. Yeah, I had never seen that one. But I tell you, my day went by very, very good. We had a great time. So this morning, we're going to read from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Amen. So this morning, we're going to talk from the subject of a legacy worth leaving. Monday, I was talking with a good friend of mine. We were talking about making a difference in the lives of people. And we share similar ideas on how we can make a difference in the lives of people, not how we could, but how we can. Um, if, if how we could, meaning we have not yet started making a difference, but how, when we talk about how we can, it's an ongoing process. Amen. Amen. So we talked about using our individual blessings to be a blessing to others, whether it be financially or through rendering a service. We can make a difference in the lives of people. We can make a difference in the lives of people. Have you ever had the desire to be a blessing to someone? Have you ever thought that you had nothing to be a blessing to someone? Better yet, when you think about being a blessing to someone, what comes to your mind? See, I have come to the conclusion that all of us have something that we can bless others with. Many of us are loaded with money. Many of us have an abundance of skills, whether it be carpentry, electrical, plumbing, flooring, mechanical, auto mechanic. Many of us are loaded with these kinds of skills. And many of us are blessed with an awesome personality, one that can even win the devil over. See, we are just that, some of us are just that nice and caring. Many of us can sing. We can make people laugh. We are loaded with blessings to be a blessing to others. Young or old, we are loaded to be a blessing to others. God has blessed all of us with blessings to be a blessing. Then our conversation shifted to leaving a legacy. See, I said to him, have you ever wondered what your family and friends are going to say at your funeral? How many of you have ever sat, sat in, in, in the church at a funeral and listened to all of the comments that the family and friends were sharing and thought about yourself, thought about your life? What would people say about me? I've done that many times. Who's going to show up? Will the church be full? Will it be empty? Will people be laughing, singing? Will people be crying? Or what? Have you ever wondered what, some, what people will be saying? See, not just family and friends, but others that have had the pleasure of knowing you for any length of time. First impressions make a, uh, uh, is lasting, amen? 
So not just family and friends, but what, what, about, what about that person that uh, works on the same floor that you work on? And every morning, both of you um, end up in the elevator at the same time. What kind of impression have you made on that person? What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? See, many of us are focused only on tangible things such as houses, cars, jewelry, clothes and money. But are those things really that important? I mean, how far would those things take your loved ones? Money, houses, all those things, houses gets, gets old. And if you leave me a house that's too big, I can't even take care of it. If you leave me, uh, if you leave me a lot of money and I never had any money, I'm going to self-destruct. I may become a drug addict. Who knows? Amen. <laughs> you know, so 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 those things, many of us focus on those things. But will those and, and then and then the thing about, the, you know, will those uh, tangible gifts or blessings last from generation to generation? See, what about leaving a legacy that will continue to bless generations and generations after you are gone? See, houses, cars, clothes, as I said, they eventually get old. Jewelry will eventually get lost, stolen or sold. Money will run out. Plus, it has the potential of dividing families. So what kind of legacy can we leave that is worth leaving? So I found a definition online. It's kind of long, but to, to me, this is the meat of, of, of this message. Amen. So bear with me as I read this. So it says, what is a legacy? And it came from um, uh, MiriamLifeDesign.com. So it says, what is a legacy? Often then you think about legacy is something that is left behind after a person has passed. Legacy is more about sharing what you have learned, not just what you have earned and passing on values over valuables. As material wealth is only a small fraction of your legacy, a more holistic definition of legacy is when you are genuinely grounded in offering yourself and making a meaningful, lasting, and energizing contribution to humanity by serving a cause greater than your own. The requirements of a legacy are that you embrace your uniqueness, passionately immersing your whole self into life so that your gift will be to all and that you take responsibility to ensure that it will have a life beyond that of you, its creator, outliving and outlasting your time on earth. Legacy germinates unity consciousness. It is not an entity, but an ongoing activity and is what you do between here and eternity. The lens of legacy gives you a view of your life from a generational perspective, where you become aware of the desire to live beyond yourself. Focus on making a difference in the lives of others and giving back. The legacy you leave is the life you lead and therefore legacy is the residue of a life well lived. Your life matters as everything that you say and do is a deposit into your legacy. Creating your legacy is a pathway resulting in a deep sense of significance where true meaning is found somewhere beyond the pursuit of success, which results in a ripple effect that positively impacts society. Inherently, when you shift to living your legacy, your influence comes from who you are authentically at the core and you measure value and life purposes other than by an emphasis on accomplishments, wealth, recognition, prestige, acclaim, power, or position. When I read this, I thought about the life of Christ. Amen? A legacy worth leaving. So as we read in the text today, Paul encourages the Philippian church to live their life in a way that exemplifies Christ. The life of Christ is truly a legacy. So my question for today is how can we leave a legacy worth leaving? So we have to commit to Christ. And as we look at verses on one through four, it reads again, therefore there 
if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in, of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. We have to commit to Christ. Now through Paul, though Paul is addressing the church as a whole, this can also apply to us individually as well. See, we cannot make anybody do anything that they do not want to do. If, if, if you all sitting in here today want to take your mask off, what can I do to make you put it back on? Absolutely nothing, amen? And, and when we hear on the news all the time, the people are saying all people have to do is put the mask on. That's all they have to do. But can we, we have no power to make anybody do anything. The only person we can control is ourselves. See, we have to commit to following Christ, right? Commit to Christ. The only person that we can control is ourselves. So if we are going to leave, leave a legacy worth leaving, we have to commit to Christ. Now, committing to Christ causes us to take responsibility of our actions, of our thoughts, and of our motives. When we commit to Christ, it encourages us. His love comforts us. It encourages us to share together in the spirit and it gives us mercy and kindness. It prevents us from being selfish and prideful. Committed to Christ causes us to be humble and thoughtful of others more than ourselves. The other day, I was cutting this client's hair and we, and we were talking, I forget what we were talking about, but then another guy, my next appointment came in and he kind of interrupted the conversation. And he took us a complete different way. So the, the guy that I was cutting, after I got done cutting the hair, he stayed in the shop and, and then um, I got the, the, the guy that uh, interrupted our conversation. Um, once I got done with him, he left. So then um, me and the guy, we started talking again and I told him about my text um, that uh, I told him about the text that I was using today. And the interesting thing about it is that when this guy took us in a complete different way, neither one of us frowned, neither one of us ignored him. We allowed him to lead us in that direction. So. That was an example of selflessness. Amen. That was a, a, a that was an example of, 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 of considering someone else over ourselves. That was an example of 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 of, of, of not um, thinking that we were all this and we were all that. Even that our conversation really wasn't that important. So I shared with um, my client, you know, um, that that, you know, that that's the process how God helps me to develop my sermons from week to week. You know, I pray and I ask the Lord for, uh, for a topic and then, I, and then the, the topic comes and then throughout my whole week, things just unfold and unfold and unfold, amen? So when we commit to following Christ, we, we, we commit, we commit to, 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 to lead and to live in a life that is pleasing to the Lord, not a life that's pleasing to ourselves. You think about this. I'm getting ahead of myself. Bear with me. Amen. So let me go to my next point. So my next point is that we have to think and act like Christ. And in verse five through 11, we see where it, it reads on. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, verse five says exactly what we need to do. Let this man be in, be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
In other words, in our lives, we must think and act like Christ. See, Jesus was unselfish in everything that he did. He gave up his place with God. He was born to be a man. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God. He became like a servant. So every day presents us the opportunity to think and act like Christ. Think about the various roles we have. We are husbands, wives, children, siblings, friends, co-workers, and strangers. And within every one of these roles, we are constantly interacting with someone. Amen. I have the man to act and think like Christ. Well, I grew up with three sisters. And when I go into the bathroom, I would see rollers, hair, just everything all over the place. And we only had one bathroom. Amen. So what do I do? Do I get upset? Which I probably did because I didn't know any better at the time. But if I had the mind to act and to think like Christ, I would understand that they were females. Amen. So 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 we have to act and we have to think like Christ. And, and, and every day presents us the opportunity to think and to act like Christ. So think about all of the missed opportunities we have had in our lives to act and think like Christ. So what about the time when we were walking into the store and saw a piece of paper on the ground and walked right by it? What about the time we were in the parking lot and saw a shopping cart blocking the parking space and walked right by it? Or what about the time we were in the store and someone wanted to buy some alcohol or cigarettes and they were short and we said to ourselves, they don't need it anyway. My money's too good to, 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 to buy that stuff. Or what about the time someone was trying to merge into the traffic in front of us and we refused to let them over? See, every day presents an opportunity to act and to think like Christ. It, it doesn't have to be some big spectacle thing. A lot of us, the only time we want to act and think like Christ is when we're in the church. Amen. But I've often said that the church is not a place where real ministry takes place. What do we do when we're out on our own? What do we do when nobody's watching? And the thing about this, when we talk about leaving a legacy and acting and thinking like Christ, people are looking at you and you don't even know it. There was this gentleman um, when, when I used to go to Golden Corral um, some years ago for lunch and I used to see this man in there. And, and I tell him this all the time because he's one of my clients now. And I thought he was the meanest person in the world. He never did anything really to, to make me think that, but just his demeanor. He didn't know me and I didn't know him, but I would see him. I would go almost every Thursday and I would see him. So think about the places that we go. You never know who's watching. You never know who's looking. You never know who's listening. You, you and you and me, we can leave a legacy worth living to anyone. And think about in our households. Amen. How do we interact with each other? How do we give? How do we share? How do we respond? How do we recover? How do we solve conflicts? How do we do these things? Somebody's listening. Somebody's watching. At the barbershop, we talk about our wives all the time. And we've come to the conclusion that I hate to say this, but all the wives are mean. Not just mine, not just yours, but they all. So how, how, how do we interact? You know, the, the young boys are listening. So what do we say? What kind of legacy are we leaving? Are we acting and thinking like Christ? So the kind of legacy Christ left was a legacy that would be a blessing to all, not just to his immediate family. Let us let us shift that mind, that, that, that mind. OK, yeah, I want to take care of mine. But at the same time, there's so many people in this earth that God has blessed us to be a blessing to. Amen. There are so many lives that we can touch, so many lives that we can bless. You know, the old saying, you know, if somebody asks for a dollar, don't give him a dollar, something like that. But to teach a man how to fish and he can eat forever. Amen. We leave good values, good morals. We, 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 we demonstrate in a positive way. It can bless generation after generation after generation after generation after generation, such as we're still bragging about the legacy that Christ left. Well, the Bible tells us that that same spirit 
that's, that raised Christ from the, from the grave, that same spirit is inside of us, that same power, that same desire, that same determination. So when we think about leaving a legacy, let us commit to Christ. Let us think and act like Christ. And I guarantee, I guarantee, I guarantee we will leave a legacy worth leaving. Amen. The doors of the church are open. And when I think about that legacy, you know, certain um, characteristics come to mind, certain um, actions come to mind. Amen. And I want to leave this with you. Let us love. Let us show kindness. Let us have mercy. Let us have understanding. Let us be unselfishness. Let us care. Let us give. Let us serve. We all can do these things. Amen. We might not be able to do them every day. But we can do these things. We may not be able to do all of them, but we can do these things. Let us do it until it hurts. God once told me, he said, Craig, save until it hurts. Saving is, is worse than pain, Verizon. Let us love until it hurts. Let us serve until it hurts. Amen. 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 I'm done. All right. So if any of you are out there and you have not yet committed your life to Christ. It's not a hard process. It's not a difficult thing to do. And there aren't any requirements that you have to make. So if you've been told those things, I want to challenge you and I want to give you a different um, way of thinking. God created you. God gave you life. God's been with you from the time that you were born on this earth. God knows everything about you. There is nothing that you can do to get right with God, but open your arms and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. Amen. And if you've done that, God bless you. God bless you. And at this time, we, um, we have another selection. But before the selection, we're going to uh, have our communion today. And we're going to ask that um, each, each side would um, come out against the wall, come around such as we did Founders Day. And um, you can, and you'll be able, you'll serve yourself. Amen. Amen. Silent night, holy night.
transition to our communion. On the night leading to the Passover, Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room in Jerusalem. And Jesus was explaining to them that this was his last meal and that he was going to uh, leave and that was a special moment during that time. But the thing about it is that uh, his disciples, they could not fully understand uh, what Jesus um, was telling them. We today, we have a much better understanding of the message that Jesus was conveying. And we understand and we understand more than they that it had to take place. But Jesus left us um, with um, this great sacrament and each time we um, have the opportunity uh, to take part in this great sacrament, I think it's important that, that we uh, do the best that we can to reflect back to that moment in the, open, uh, the upper room during the Last Supper. No, we weren't there, but we can imagine, um, you know, on the atmosphere, we can imagine the passion that Jesus had. And now understanding exactly what Jesus was saying, this is something that we um, should really, should really, should really, um, be anxious to, part to partake in. Amen. And the great thing about it is that um, he left this for anyone, anyone who wanted to partake in the sacrament. So that night, Jesus, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them. And he said, this is my body, which is broken uh, for you. And he said to do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for all. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, such a great uh, institution. We thank you for this sacrament. And Lord, as we partake in this Holy Communion this day, Lord, we pray that our minds will be focused on you, that, that we will truly reflect as best as we can on the moment, God, that 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 Jesus uh, passed out um, the sacraments and that the disciples and Jesus uh, ate and drank of the bread and of the of the cup. And God, we ask that you bless this moment right now. Bless the sacraments, God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
have my glasses on. Everybody been served over here? I can't see. Everybody been served on this side? Server over here. Reverend Jones. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for all, let us drink together. So we certainly thank God for. All that God has done and said on this day, we thank all of you for uh, coming out um, to support our ministry. Um, it really, truly shows that uh, God is still in control. Amen. Amen. So as we depart uh, today, we pray that uh, God will bless all of you this week. And we pray that that you all will really, really um, allow yourself to be a blessing to others. Nothing big small things. Um, it just doesn't matter. However, the spirit leads and guides you. Amen. 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 Let us close with our benediction. In this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand,